he who is spiritually dependent. The word already says they will depend spiritually on someone or something to satisfy their spirit. Many remain spiritually dependent. They haven't found that what really makes them spiritually complete and spiritually independent. Then they keep on this constant search of people and things to satisfy their inner self that is never satisfied. The person who is emotionally or spiritually dependent, we can put like this. Let's give some symptoms. They are always searching for a spiritual food from third parties. For example, internet Christians. Nowadays, there is the trend of internet Christians. In the internet, everybody is a preacher, influencer. And those who are emotionally dependent, they are always in search of someone, of a message. Let me search for this pastor. This pastor is good. This bishop is wonderful. This one is well spoken. This one has a good message. The person is always in search for someone to speak about God to them. They become dependent on others to feed them. Like a child who depends on the parents to eat, that person depends on someone else to give them the spiritual food. This is a symptom of someone who is spiritually dependent. They don't understand that they should seek in God, directly in God, the Word and the food for themselves. Jesus said, Man shall not live by bread alone, but the Word that comes out of my mouth also feeds them. So you need to search in the Word of God the food for you. And God left His word. You have no idea the price that many paid for this, the Bible, to reach you. You have no idea how many kings, emperors, how many people throughout the centuries tried to erase this, to eliminate this from the face of the earth. And God preserved His word to reach you. And you have this Bible in your house and you despise it. You don't pay attention to it. You want to know more about the news out there, the fake news, than the good news of the gospel. So you don't need to be depending on a pastor. The pastor plays his role. The church plays its role. It's important to you. The Bible speaks about the pastors, the church, the role of the church. But you cannot be depending on someone giving the food to you. You need to search to feed yourself directly from God and not a spiritual dependent person. Other symptoms the people have. They are spiritually insecure. They are afraid of death. This is spiritual insecurity. They don't believe in their own faith and in their own prayer. Spiritual insecurity. They are dependent. We spoke about death. They feel afraid. Their prayer, they can ask someone to pray on their behalf. Pray for me, pastor. Pray for me, bishop. When we go on the internet to hold a program, to give a message, people fill the comments with requests. Pray for me, pray for so and so. They ask for prayers, but they don't pray themselves. They prefer to ask for prayers than they to use out of the rights that Jesus gave them to ask on His name. He said, all that you ask in prayer in my name, believing you will receive it. Jesus took the necessity out on you having an intercessor, intermediator. It's important for us to pray for each other. The Bible teaches us to pray for each other. 
but you cannot be depending on someone praying for you. You also must pray. And to not be spiritually dependent. Fear of death. If you are afraid of death, you are spiritually dependent. You didn't solve your greatest problem yet, which is the problem of your soul. You haven't understood yet the Lord Jesus' salvation plan, which involves you repenting from your sins to believe that only Him can forgive you of your sins. And if you want to be saved, you need to live your life from now on differently in obedience to His word. And he guarantees your salvation, your eternity. You have to solve this within yourself. Then you will no longer depend on your good works. You will depend on him. Why am I certain that I'm saved? That I'm saved today. I was saved yesterday and I'm saved today. And I will remain saved tomorrow if I remain believing, depending on the word of God. Why am I sure of this? Because my life is not based on my goodness. I don't believe that I'm going to heaven because I'm nice, because I'm a bishop. Quite the contrary. I know that I'm not good. There's not such a person who is good, Jesus said. Only the Father. Only one is good. You who say you are a good person, you are a liar. You are not. already lied. Because the Bible says there's no one who is good. Jesus said, Either Jesus lied or you lied. It's one or the other. There's no one who is good, only the Father who is in heaven. So do not lean yourself on your goodness. I'm not saved because I'm good. I'm saved because He is good. And I haven't trusted. Lean my life on Him. I'm certain to live my life based on His word. You need to solve this for you to depend on the word and not to depend on religion, to not depend on candles, on mass. Do you believe that a mass will solve your problem after you died? Do you believe that to be buried in a certain place that will change your story? You need to solve your situation in life. The spiritually dependent is insecure, spiritually speaking. There's always someone between them and God, a pastor, a family member, which is the case of many, family members who are always like this. There are many children who feel at peace because the mom is praying for them. Many husbands are at peace because the wife is a woman of faith, is always in the church praying for him. Do not lean on the faith of someone else. You will not going to be saved by the faith of someone else. Salvation is individual. So the spiritual dependent person is always depending on someone of a third party. There's always between them and God. Is the pastor, is the intercessor. One day I heard someone saying, I have a mother of prayer. It was not their mother. It was someone from the church. The church that they used to attend. I don't know, the, the pastor said like this to him. I'll be your mother in prayer. I'm going to pray for you like my child. He was secure that he had a mother in prayer. For goodness sake. The spiritual dependent person is always like this. They keep on placing their faith on someone else. Someone who they judge to be more holy than them. Closer to God than them. I let the pastor pray for me, the mother in prayer, the pastor A, B, or C, because he is closer to God. This shows a huge spiritual ignorance from your side, because there's no one closer to God. All of us are at the same distance to God, separated from our sins and united by Him, through the name of Jesus. It's the same distance. Either you are far because of your sins or you are close because of your faith in Him. Nobody's ahead in the queue. There's always someone in between them and God. That's why they are what? Easily deceived by the spiritual gurus. Did you know that there are people who do not give one step forward before consulting the spiritual gurus? And we understand that out there. Out there, 
We understand when a person goes to make a business, first they read their signs, their horoscope. Let me see if today is a good day to do business. They will travel before they check the horoscope to check the stars, if they are favorable for them to travel, for them to check which clothes, color they will wear to have luck. This is out there, people who do not know the gospel. There's someone who is a guru who tells them what they should do. But inside the church, there's a trend within the church, which is the coach, the spiritual coach, the coach pastor. is the pastor who is in the house of the person, giving private consultations, being a guide, trying to fill the place of the Holy Spirit. This role belongs to the Holy Spirit. I am not your guru. I am not your guide. I cannot guide you. I cannot even guide myself. Will I be able to guide you? Who guides me is the Holy Spirit. It's there, written. He will guide you. Jesus said, I will pray to the Father and He will send you a helper who will be with you and in you. Him, the Spirit of Truth, will guide you into all truth. It's Him who is our guide. When you make out of the psychiatrist, the therapist, the pastor, the assistant, whoever it may be, your spiritual guide, it's a slap in the face of the Holy Spirit. It's an insult to the Holy Spirit. You're telling the Holy Spirit like this, you can be good, but this one is better. This is what you're saying. It's like, you are married and you take another woman. Your woman is not enough, then you take another woman. Your husband is not enough and then you have another man. This is betrayal, spiritual betrayal. God says in his words, I will not share my glory with anyone. I am the Lord, the only one and there's no one after me. This is the type of relationship that he wants to have with us. I am your creator. Your husband, I take care of you. God wants this exclusive dependence from us towards him. Don't make out of anybody your spiritual guru. Because if you do that, you will be easily deceived. There are people who got married because a spiritual guru said, Look, God revealed me. The prophets, the prophetess said, God revealed me that you need to get married with that person. They got married and all went wrong. Why? Because they haven't heard the voice of the Holy Spirit, the Word of God, but they've heard the Guru. Spiritually dependent. They don't understand the spiritual things. Why? Because they give to third parties. In other words, please, can you explain it better, Bishop? What does this mean? You give your faith to third parties, which at first you are naive in the faith, you give in your first steps. It's important for you to have good masters, good people to teach you. And then it comes the pastor. But the role of the man of God, the pastor, who is a real man of God, it's never and will never be someone who will make you dependent on him. I don't want you to be dependent on us. We don't want you to be dependent on us. We want you to be independent, that you may have the Holy Spirit, that He may guide you. We want what we preach here to you. You may arrive in your house, open your Bible, read, and confirm that what we are preaching to you is true. You need to be spiritually independent. So, do not be this type of person who give your faith to third parties. You let others to do because you give your offering, your tithe, you do this and that and you think that you can give your faith to third parties. You cannot do that. Faith must be direct between you and God. And to conclude, when the person is emotionally dependent, then they are more easily spiritually dependent as well. They are more easily dependent on other areas, financial life, love life, family life, etc. Which means the following. If you're not secure spiritually 
if you are not spiritually independent, you are inclined to be a failure, financially speaking, to be a failure in your love life, in your family, a failure in your professional life, a failure in other aspect of your life, because your main aspect of life, which is the backbone of our lives, which is our life with God, just like your backbone is what sustains your body standing firm, the backbone of life is a spiritual one. If the backbone of your life is weak, what will happen to the rest of the body? What will happen to the other areas of your life? Will fall or will be soft? You know, insecure. Then you need to solve your spiritual problem. Did you like this? Would you like to hear it again? Listen to it as many times as you need until this content becomes part of you. Don't forget to leave your like, comment and share. See you next time.